Well, we're at the end of the road, man. I normally sing like pomp and circumstance or something, but I'm not in voice right now, Brian. Yeah, please, please don't. don't. Please don't. <laughs> I have had the pleasure of working with you in so many situations now, a live events as a speaker. You and I have both spoken at the same event that we that neither of us organized. Um, I've done sales training for your team. I've done leadership. I guess it was more online marketing kind of training for the team. And now we're ending an executive coaching uh, phase. And you have been such a sponge and such a delight to work with because there's been no denial. There's been nothing but honesty and open introspection. Um, and I so appreciate that. You know, a lot of the, a lot of people I, I'm involved with, um, they're good people, but they don't, they don't really see what's happening. And then I'll say something and they take offense or they disagree or they read it wrong. And to your credit, you helped me pick up all those rocks and look underneath all of them and let's see what's here. And let's, let's consider whether or not this rock needs to be moved or changed or remodeled or moved or moved at all. Uh, I know that you did a review of your notes and you've been thinking about things that have worked for you. Can you articulate how you feel at the end of this program? Because I know you've worked with a lot of coaches before and I'm not trying to uh, get you to say great things about the program. I, I just wanna know honestly how this period of time, six or eight weeks has gone for you. Well, sure, Michael. It's been a you know, delight to uh, be coached by you, and I think it's been very productive. And yes, I have worked with other coaches along the way, but I have a habit of trying to change it up, you know, and, and because each of you has a different approach, a fresh pair of eyes. Um, and uh, so it's really been you know, helpful for me, uh, particularly as I've had revenue on my mind, right? I'm, I'm not, not that I I'm not interested in uh, leadership in a stricter sense or, uh, you know, being a better manager or those kinds of things. But I really wanted our engagement to be focused on ways that I can use my position to help drive revenue for the company, maybe in some, um, you know, some unexpected ways. So I think we were able to uh, achieve that. And I think some of the keys where we, you know, you're, you're an engaging guy, a personable guy, so you've got to have that. Uh, ease of uh, communication uh, to make this work, uh, but you're also very uh, blunt and honest. And I think that, uh, to your point earlier, uh, if you don't have a coach that's willing to tell you uh, what you can do to improve, or if you're a defensive, you know, you use any sports analogy. If you know, you talk about people being uncoachable, um, you know, this is something that uh, really requires uh, you know both parties to really be uh, engaged in. So. You know, when we look at the things that we wanted to try to get accomplished at the top uh, of the list, which is again, kind of use the things that I'm already doing as CEO, just to be a little bit more revenue uh, uh, focused. Uh, we did that through uh, through social media, uh, through content generation, through uh, a shift in mindset in, in terms of placing value on, on, on what I'm able to deliver. And so I thought that was really, um, you know, achieved. Uh, probably early on in our in our sessions together, uh, as I've admitted, I still have some homework to do, even though we're wrapping up uh, our session. But I'm going to stick with that because I feel that's part of the accountability. Let's make sure that um, you know that we follow through uh, on that. And we've had you know business happens, life happens. We've had some unexpected things that have uh, come up. So I always, always appreciate that sort of live fire coaching, whereas issues or challenges come up, we're able to get some uh, you know, trusted. Uh, outside feedback uh, from somebody with a, with a clear clear view of what's going on. So I think it's been uh, really good. And um, I think others can benefit from an executive coach that has the communication skills and the sales skills and the ability to, you know, uh, you know kind of get you to real results. Yeah, I appreciate that very much. Um, I'm thinking about influencers and how a lot of influencers think that they have superpowers that they don't have. And a lot of people who are influencers that don't, they're not empowered. They, they don't feel like they have that kind of um, sway over people. Mm -hmm. And what, what happens, I think, at the top of a national association like yours is you've got people who are supposed to be doing stuff. 
That's what you hired them for. And, and I know almost all of them. They're all very confident people. They know what they're doing. Uh, but I can't understand uh, sometimes why um, they don't do what they're supposed to do. You talked about revenue and we've talked about this concept called sales enablement. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that exactly? Um, and you've been busy, of course, being, you're at the top of the triangle. You're, you're flying out to these events pre COVID, uh, and you're doing all this high end stuff and you were just counting on these people beneath you in the triangle to do what they're supposed to be doing. And, and a lot of them, almost all of them, maybe all of them are doing their absolute best. But what happens often in organizations is there's a disconnect between the top guy and the, the lieutenants and the top guy starts to let go of his superpowers because he's focused on other things. You know, you can, you can only, you can only look at so many things in a 24 hour period. And I, I saw a little bit of that in the association and to your credit, you've reclaimed a lot of that superpower. I think, I think you understand what you're capable of a lot more than you did when we first started talking. And that's not a dig at, any level of impotence early on. You were right. a high powered executive early on. But now, now I think you're starting to understand what happens when the president of an association offers a free consult to a member of the organization. In fact, you started to put that in your email signature files and it blew the tops of your members' heads off because they never had that option before. And other presidents of other associations don't do that shit. It is so well, impressive. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, and, and we've had a lot of uh, first time members, uh, you know, and I talked to another one today uh, where, you know, they're they're impressed, you know, they're impressed off the bat, not necessarily with me. They're initially impressed with my title. You know, I say you know, my title was invited to this convention or uh, my title got this uh, call on my calendar. But then hopefully when you have the conversation with them and we're a service organization. So if they I'm able to say to them, hey, I want to make sure we got to know each other. I wanted to make sure that you had another friend in the business that I'm here to help you. Um, and frankly, uh, you know, kind of trying to be cognizant of that value. I'm trying to talk them through some of your techniques about, hey, was this helpful to you? You know, did we pay off your annual dues in the first call? And getting them thinking about when that uh, membership might come up for renewal or buying other products and services from us. So, so I do think that any leader goes through uh, ups and downs, you know, confidence ebbs and flows. And so sometimes you just need that uh, <clears throat> edification of that, but also, you know, be, have honest conversations of where you need to get better. Yeah. Way toward the end of our time together in this in coaching realm, uh, we I floated the idea of you writing a book uh, because you've been president of a national association for 20 plus years. And there's something about being an author of a book that uh, really presents the cachet. I mean, you want to be an influencer. And the weird thing about authoring a book is people don't even have to read the book to be impressed with the fact you wrote a book. I mean, you, you can hold this up on a camera now. You can hold it up in front of a live audience. Whether they buy the book or not, you wrote the book on it. And that's going to give you a superpower that, that you've never experienced before. And hopefully we get a chance to do that. Uh, whether you do it with me or somebody else is not, of me, you know, I'd like to work with you on it. But the important thing is that you get that done so that you become that voice of authority in your space. Uh, it's probably the, the pinnacle of, of uh, the influence, the influencer toolbox. It's probably the most powerful tool you can have in there. No, I, I've learned a lot uh, from that and you're a professional speaker, so you know the value of being able to sort of present yourself with this, uh, you know, this uh, stamp of approval of being a, a published author. And so I can see how that could help, um, you know, both kind of my day job and my passion, you know, being our foundation work. So maybe there's some way that that book can, you know, draw on the experiences from both and, and help both organizations, uh, as well as making sure that you know, people are, are looking to me for, for guidance when it comes to our business. Bravo. So better things to come. And um, Brian Wallace has been such a pleasure. Uh, thanks for doing this uh, video with me. Thanks for being in the program. And thanks for running one of the preeminent 
associations in the United States of America. It's the Coin Laundry Association, a terrific trade publication called Planet Laundry, and of course the foundation arm of what you do, which we're expecting to hear really good things about in the future, which is Laundry Cares. Thanks for all you do. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. <laughs> See you later.